I'm Tommy Mello, I'm a biologist. I'm one of the co-founders of Biosphere NGO uh, here in Cape Verde. We still have a huge colony of birds, we still have great population of sea turtles, for example. We still have fish, coral reefs, sharks. Cape Verde is an archipel, 10 islands, but the people don't have boats, so nobody comes to the reserve, just the fishermen. So uh, it's really, really difficult for you to explain to the people that the reserve is important. We start, me and my father, just try to show the people um, what is wrong with the environment in Cape Verde. And the Prime Minister in Cape Verde visit us. We, we not uh, expected this. And we start bio Biosphere in, in 2006. My vision is the huge marine protected area in Cape Verde. It's a piece of Cape Verde in the past. So this project aims to restore the habitats of a tiny island in the Atlantic, uh, in Cape Verde, uh, where most of the wildlife disappeared, but it has fantastic conditions to have uh, animals again and plants that were there before. So we have some species just live here, and the mesmes just in this island, seven kilometers square, like Razzolard, for example, like the giant geckos. So this little bird that is one of the most threatened in the world is the Razzolark. Now we have to save this population and try to increase its numbers to what they were before. The Razzolark depends a lot on rainy years, so whenever it rains he's able to have his food and to breed. And we can see the, the climate change effect. This is the third consecutive years with dry. And with the climate change like this, uh, we can lose on species. Normally right now in September we this, isle, this islet is completely green. It's the food for the, the Razzolark. And now you can see it's completely dry. Every year we have more and more strong storms. Like this year we have the first Cape Verde hurricane. So this one of these big events, uh, climate events, can just destroy a species. It live in a so small place. This is why we try to translocate the, the Razzolark to, also to Santa Luzia because they have the same vegetation, it's quite big, it's 15 kilometers square. Uh, so we believe once we divide the population, they have more chance to, 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 to survive. And having two populations, it's much more safe in terms of invasion by species like rats or something in, in those islands. In 2006, the population was 70. If you will have just 70, we cannot try the translocation. The translocation has to be done right now when we have at least 800 or 1,000 animals. Uh, I'm Patricia Handel Rocha. I coordinate the field camp for turtles here in Santa Luzia. So right now we have like um, a medium of 500 uh, females that come every year. We are sitting in a hatchery. It's a place like a little nursery for turtles. And we relocate all the nests in danger position, like very close to the water. And we put them in this to protect them. In Cape Verde, the major threat is a human pressure because they, there's a traditional to eat uh, turtle meat and uh, eggs too. Uh, we are here every day looking for the turtles, four months in a year, and we have volunteers all over the world to come and help us in this uh, watch. The biggest challenge here in this island with the CPF project is the logistics because um, since it's a desert island, everything we have to bring from São Vicente Island. Waking up at 4.30 in the morning and walk eight kilometers every day, no fresh water to take baths, sleeping in the sleeping bags and outside in the tent. You have to do it for love. But with the CPF project, we'll be able to do more, more things. The CPF support and the communication with the regional implementation team was uh, really good in terms of dealing with those issues because some plans have to be changed or altered. So you have to be flexible, you have to know very well the environment we work. So uh, keep your mind open. Uh, 
keep your projects flexible because we will need to change something. So there are the challenge, but we do it because otherwise the the turtles uh, will disappear from here, and we don't want that. <laughs> Biosfera, it's a, a fantastic organization and they started as just father and son working together to protect these islands, Santa Luzia and all the reserve. The CPF project was our biggest project so far, so it's the biggest trust <laughs> they gave us. We build the project together with SPEA. They teach us a lot of uh, ornithology, for example. They help us improving our methodologies. We, we now know where the Cape Verdean shearwater is going to feed, for instance, because we tag them with GPSs and it was the Biosphere team doing that. It was a great opportunity for Biosphere to raise the management of Biosphere right now. They built an, a stronger organization that can deal with a lot of conservation issues and they are now much more professional, more prepared to work with other institutions, with government, other NGOs, international funders, international NGOs. Without them, maybe we, is, we will grow, but not as fast as we grow. Our bigger success was uh, exactly uh, the grow up of Biosphere, because now we have capacity to continue. Okay, we make some good things, we follow up population of seabirds, of turtles, we make studies on reptiles, on mice, on cats. This is all good, we learn a lot, but we grow up in capacity, biosphere. I believe this is the, the, the main thing. They are now much more prepared to deal with larger projects. So all the logistics involved, all the accountancy, everything, uh, all the reporting. With these uh, three years of CPF project, we are better now. I don't think, I'm sure. <laughs> Before we are uh, an NGO in the name, now we are really an NGO in, in the loss and in the, in the in the structure. So um, I'm glad to spare to, to help us with through the CPF projects to be here right now like Biosphere, like an NGO properly. We are trying to change something and we hope we can change. Biosphere right now aim to the government to engage with this protected area and start helping us to establish the, the management plan. And for that, the government have to help us to create a body of rangers to take care of this. I really think that it works to be um, an NGO and a government uh, taking care of a reserve. The government sees us as a partner. I believe it's possible because we just have 200 fishermen fishing here. Uh, we just need to continue working. Even with the fishermen, it's better because we are in the link between the fishermen and the government. When we start with the shear water, the, the fishermen come here and kill 15,000 birds for shear water for a year. And now they work with us. They help us to counting the birds in the nests. So I believe it was a big, big change. Because here it's really uh, isolated and no one will know if they poach any turtles. So we hope we are raising uh, awareness. We have tea time, for example, with the fishermen. And they sit with us and we discuss some subject about the environment. Every day, leader steps. The fishermen change their perspective of turtles. I may say that 70% know, knows from their heart not to poach, not because of the law but they establish this relationship with us and with the turtle. The fishermen help us with this, all of this you're seeing here, and um, they adopt the nests and they check every day. Since we are here, they respect us and our work because they see every day that we are going and it's difficult, there are a lot of challenge to be here and they don't approach.
it's, it's really important because the people right now, when they talk about the reserve, they say, yes, 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 they, they have uh, white and black birds, they have lizards like this big. So the people right they, now, they understand why this precious of, the, of this reserve. It's quite different than the two years ago. And the Cape Verdean people, it's, they, they, they really love the environment. They, they, if they don't know if it's wrong, they could do nothing. But if you teach them, I believe they can quickly pass to the, the, the illegal, to the, the one to help. To have some conclusion, we need 10 years of uh, working. And I believe we have already the attention of uh, a lot of good people. So we will continue. Six years to go. Tarula na casa, ta fazer papa uma cachupa. Chubiji na rostura, nós na palma cafata. Cafune na cabeça, oi, oi, mamã Joana. Because they are waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> to come.